This is the story of the latest financial scandal to rock Wall Street and the global financial industry. It's one of those stories that only happens in the United States. It's the story of Bill Huang, a South Korean immigrant who, after arriving in the United States with his father, learned to read and write English whilst working at McDonald's. Later became a successful financier in the multi-billion dollar hedge fund industry and has now left several of the world's largest banks shaking in their boots. For example, Switzerland's Credit Suisse alone appears to have lost more than $5 billion. And although this has been clearly the most damaged, it has not been the only entity that has been harmed. In total, we're talking about losses in excess of $10 billion, which have fallen on financial institutions such as Nomura, Morgan Stanley, and UBS, among others. But what exactly happened? What caused this new checkmate on the financial system? How on earth could one investor cost the world's leading banks more than $10 billion? The Fall of the Hidden Tiger since 2013, so in just over seven years, Bill Huang built one of the largest fortunes in the entire world on the 38th floor of number 888 7th Avenue in Manhattan, just a few meters from Central Park. He did this through his own family office, a kind of private fund known as Archegos Capital Management, with virtually no one knowing anything about it. Bill Huang, who had been sanctioned and debarred by the SEC, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, in 2012 for insider trading and market manipulation, achieved a net worth of about $20 billion through his investments, according to Bloomberg estimates. But wait a minute, because the entity's market position was much higher. The full details and full implications are not yet known, but it is estimated that before the collapse, Archegos Capital managed a portfolio of nearly $100 billion. Yes, that's right, $100 billion. We're talking about a portfolio that was also very concentrated. What I mean is, it was composed of relatively few companies in which he had a huge exposure. We're talking about stocks such as Viacom CBS, GSX Tech Edu, Shopify, Baidu, and Vipshop Holdings. But then how could he have gone unnoticed? How could it be that no one knew about his operations or his financial muscle? How did Huang manage to build a portfolio of $100 billion and a net worth of over $20 billion in just seven years? These are questions that in some way are related. Archegos Capital Management's operations did not consist of buying shares, but of investing through instruments such as CFDs or swaps, two types of financial derivatives formulated through contracts with financial institutions and investment banks. This explains why the name never appeared in the documents that revealed the position of the largest shareholders in listed companies. And it is also what explains the strong capital gains reaped in such a short time, and the fact that Archegos' open operations amounted to somewhere around the incredible figure of $100 billion. In other words, Bill Huang used enormous leverage to invest. In this way, through in-depth fundamental analysis, he decided which companies to invest in and then poured all his resources into them. He was trying to achieve the best position that he could. It is estimated that at the beginning of 2021, this family office's degree of leverage in its operations was between six and eight times. In other words, for every $100 invested by Archegos Capital, it was only putting up between $12.5 and $17 of its own money. The rest was debt, debt contracted with the financial entities with which it operated. This explains why Archegos had a net worth of some $20 billion and a portfolio of almost $100 billion, with practically no one knowing anything about the scope of its operations. The fact is that Huang's analysis strategy worked. As you can see, the fall in itself had nothing to do with poor stock selection. Not at all. And in fact, while Wall Street values rose almost 12% during the last quarter of 2020, Archegos' investments gained more than 30%. Wait a minute though, because the thing that didn't work, or rather what Huang couldn't deal with was his enormous leverage. Take note, because this is how large banks such as Credit Suisse, Nomura, Morgan Stanley, and UBS lost more than $10 billion. From Tremor to Collapse Many analysts point out that the collapse of this family office caused the largest loss of a family fortune in a single stroke. The sudden collapse of Archegos Capital Management meant the disappearance of its $20 billion wealth in just two days. Never in financial history has an individual lost so much money so quickly. I had never seen anything like it because of how quiet, how focused, and how quickly the money disappeared. Mike Novogratz. The whole storm broke on Monday, the 22nd of March, 2021. That day, Viacom CBS stock, which just 12 months earlier was trading at $12, hit a price of $100, something that led the company to carry out a capital increase to raise money at that favorable valuation. 
the announcement, sent the stock down sharply and hit Arcagos, which is suspected to have held a seven times leveraged position in the company. It was one of its largest. The problem with leveraged products is that when prices fall, banks require the investor to contribute more funds to cover the risk, which is known in the financial world as a margin call. And if the client is not able to provide the required funds, the financial institution is forced to sell the shares or assets to reduce the risk. And that is exactly what happened in this case. Arcago's capital management was not able to meet the margin call and the banks that had financed it, particularly the US banks, which were the fastest to react, began to liquidate their positions. This is known as sell-off or massive sales. As a result, the stocks that made up this family office's portfolio began to plummet. By the close of business on Thursday, the portfolio had lost 27% of its value, completely devouring all its capital, all of its net worth. <laughs> Look at the graphs showing the variation in some of its main positions. Arcagos was not the only victim. The banks that took the longest to liquidate their positions found themselves with huge losses. The shares they had bought were worth much less, and no one was covering that loss in value anymore. They were out of the game, so to speak. Look at how the losses are distributed among the large banking giants that participated in these operations. The most incredible case is undoubtedly that of Credit Suisse. Its losses exceed $5 billion, and it has even had to announce a 1.9 billion capital increase to shore up its balance sheet. It turns out this Swiss bank took an enormous risk to make a profit of just $18 million a year. That is what it earned from Arcagos operations. Unbelievable. So there you have it, the latest Wall Street scandal and the latest example of how playing with derivatives can be a very high risk activity. In upcoming videos from us and in collaboration with our friends from Value School, we'll take a look at the fall of Lehman Brothers, the case of Bernie Madoff, and that's of Jerome Kerville, a stock trader who ended up costing the French bank, Société Générale, more than 4 billion euros. So if you wanna keep up to date with all our news, don't forget to subscribe to Visual Politic. And now if you found this video interesting, let us know by hitting that like button. All the best. See you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.